now we're going to get to Zachary Levi and uh, some of the Shazam drama just continuing. Because, like I said, I got a couple things I got to get off my chest with him. But um, let me say for now, I understand that this is very personal for Zachary Le- uh, Levi. I understand that this um, role of Shazam is a big thing because after playing Chuck on TV, this is probably one of his most notable roles, right? So, you know, you got to hold that to your chest. I get it. I get it. And then after James Gunn made his whole announcement of the DCU and, you know, he only loosely, loosely mentioned Shazam. And to his credit, He did say that Shazam has always been in his own little corner of the DCU. So that means that he connects well in the DCU. So because of that, and because Gunn and Saffron are are good friends with Levi, I think the character of Shazam is going to continue. I think he's going to keep going into James Gunn's DCU, and he'll be just fine. I just don't think they need any more Shazam movies, especially if he's not going to go against Black Adam. Because to be honest, once you get past Shazam's origin story, his stories are not that great, in my opinion. <clears throat> his fights with Black Adam, great. But outside of that, not so much. Anyway, when it comes to Mr. Levi, he's been making the news lately. Now, I am not going to get into uh, all of his tweets or all of his other stuff that he's been getting into. Some people have been getting on him for political stuff, vaccines, stuff, what I don't care about that. That's not my business right now. I'm more concerned about the fact that you're adding to the drama. Zachary Levi is currently adding to the WBDC drama because he won't be quiet and he keeps talking and he pulls little stunts like this. We just got done talking about The Rock and the post credit scene thing, and guess what happens? Zachary Levi backs up that report by actually sharing it on his social media. And where is it? Right here. He goes and posts this on his social media, and he puts that little comment, the truth shall set you free. The truth will set you free. This is what he posted on his Instagram story. So, first and foremost, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Like, when I first saw this, when I first saw him do this, I was like, bro, that's messy as hell. Because the whole point of that article was putting blame on The Rock at the same time when Shazam news about it flopping was happening. None of this stuff, even if it's, look, if you a team player, why would you share anything that's potentially negative to your team? Even if it's not you directly, why would you share any of that? So with that said, um, I think we're going to end off with, um, you know, being a little more fair. Uh, we're going to let him speak for himself because my man actually had more to say. Dropped a whole video on his Instagram story um, explaining himself. So let's take a look. Let, let, let's get ready and we're going to listen to him so he can speak for himself. All right, so a man here went on Instagram. Again, I don't know who told him to do this or why, but he felt as though this was a good idea. He said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go on here and talk. Now, one of the things he does in this first one, we're going to, it's like three main clips. One of the first, things he did was um he wanted to address snyder fans right because unfortunately 
there is a segment of Snyder fandom that can be pretty toxic. And um, in the past, these fans were doing things like harassing Brie Larson um, and they were dragging Shazam in the middle of all that. And at that time, Levi did come out and speak up in defense of Brie Larson and, you know, the movie. It was like, yo, like, chill out. We don't need this negativity. Let's just be cool. And I'm, I was cool with that, right? That was fine. But now he's doing what most people, I think, would call the most. So let's get to what he says here. I got to skip the part where he starts singing or whatever. And let's kind of get into what he says. And then I'm going to pause it at a couple times just so we can react. Going on out there. So listen, I don't know if anybody watching right now or any Snyder fans or DC fans, people that are not fans of mine or, or on the fence or ambivalent, I, I don't know. But let me just tell you, I love you too. I, 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 if you don't want to go see our movie, you don't have to go see our movie. If you don't like me, that's okay. I like me. In fact, I love me. Uh, if you think I'm some big goofball and you don't want to go watch a comic book movie that has any kind of humor in it because you're more into like just straight up dark, hard action, whatever, I get it. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm not trying to force anybody to go do anything that they don't want to do. But let me just remind everyone where comics started. It's particularly where Captain Marvel started. These were in comics that were geared toward younger people, that were geared toward the escapism and the fun and, and oftentimes the silliness and the goofiness and all of that stuff. And I think it's a real shame if somehow comic book movies have gotten to a place where they have to be nothing but serious and nothing but intense and nothing but dark because that's, that's a sad day, guys. I, I don't know what else to say about that. Time out. <clears throat> Let's go back to the tape here. So here's my thing. Did we not learn from Justice League, the theatrical version, the Joss Whedon one? What happened with that? They tried to put more fun into it. They tried to do all, be all silly with it. How did that work out? How did it work out? Why did that not work? Because it didn't match and it wasn't consistent with the tone that was previously set up. Man of Steel wasn't fun and go happy go lucky. Batman v Superman wasn't fun and happy go lucky. So then when they shifted it to try and make Justice League lighthearted, it was like, what are you doing? It doesn't make sense. Now, I agree with him in the sense that Everything doesn't have to be serious. You're right. It doesn't. The first Shazam movie is not a serious movie. It's a fun movie and it is a good time. So yes, that it is true that everything doesn't have to be serious. Now at the same time, everything ain't got to be slapstick, stupid, funny either. So the key thing here is you have to find balance. Sometimes you have to figure it out and be like, yo, are we doing too much with this? Maybe we should pull back. Because I feel like there are times on the movie set where people do certain things and the cast, the crew, they have a, such a good old time that they lose track of the fact that this is hurting the overall feel for the film. Because when you go for the cheap gag, when you go for the cheap payoff, you're going to get cheap results. And what have I told y'all? Cheap gags, cheap payoffs, that works for general audiences. Because why? General audiences, just entertain me. That's it. You give me something cheap. That checks my box. I don't have nothing else to judge. But when you talk about people that are actually film critics or people that understand the industry, yeah, they might laugh at that too. Yeah, they'll have a good time and have a little fun with it, but they'd be like, mm, but you forgot about making the rest of the movie good. You went for this joke and you forgot to make the rest of the movie make sense or something. So anyway, one thing I would also say is this. Why are you talking to these Snyder fans? Why? 
Why? For what? Nobody sat here. Now, I get it. In the beginning, they were doing all, some of these people were harassing Brie Larson and death threats and all this other crazy stuff. I get that. That's cool to step up and speak about these type of things or speak against them. But why are you wasting your time talking to these people who, by the way, maybe are bots? They might not be real people, some of them. Why are you wasting your time talking to them? What good is being accomplished in any of this? How does this help you with your movie that's currently flopping? How does this help you as an actor get another job? How does this help people have a better perception of the company you work for? I'm not, I'm failing to understand what this accomplishes, except for it makes you feel better. And I'm saying this from one human to another, I understand. I totally understand when you feel, let's say, emotionally attacked, you're going to feel the need to retort. I get it. I've been there myself. You know, I've had to deal with people with uh, stark differences of opinion, you know, let's say with recast T'Challa. And there'd be times, you know, I, I, I admit, I'll sit here and I'll, I'll have to respond, right? Maybe I get frustrated. But I'm also not being paid by a company. For, for I'm not working. I'm not under contract. I'm not here to sell a movie. And that's the real difference here. Everything you say and do is going to get marketed and could potentially help or hurt your film. The mere fact that me, a little old YouTuber, is talking about this is also your fault. Why are you talking to these Snyder fans? Let's move on because he got a lot of other stuff uh, to get into. Let me uh, move in, move up. Uh, and then, and then, oh yes, and then also, so uh, I may or may not have, you know, uh, reposted something in my stories um, about a story that I had nothing to do with uh, that 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 uh, the Wire had reported on. And then I got flack about it because people were saying, "Oh, what are you, you what are you doing? You're trying to blame this guy because your movie's not." not doing well like you're trying to blame us listen i haven't blamed anybody there's not one single person that i have blamed for anything with the way that our movie has performed i legitimately haven't and if you're listening to uh videos or watching videos of me or looking at things uh and you're getting that idea you are being fooled you are being brainwashed you are you are looking at propaganda those are clips those are edited those are taken completely out of context mm. and so i just encourage you if you're out there if you're hearing this right now or if you, or if you see by the way this will probably all get chopped up too uh this is the irony um but i swear to you i'm not blaming any of you i'm really not uh i have my thoughts about what's going on but but here's the thing the nah, stop This is a situation. Once again, did nobody tell you to post that on your Instagram story? You went out of your way to post something that wasn't in positive light for the inside. Whether you like it or not, whether you agreed with The Rock's decision or not, or whether you agreed with his involvement or not. Y'all are still under the same umbrella. Y'all are still part of the same Shazam, WB, DC family. Why are you sharing that article, which is not a flattering article at all? I'm just saying, you're putting yourself in a compromising situation. And by sharing that article, and then you add your commentary on top of that. You went on on top of that by saying the truth will set you free and all that. You went on to add a little spice, a little flavor on top of that. This is very similar, not the same, but similar to the Kyrie Irving situation. The only difference is Kyrie just didn't say nothing. He just shared it. 
But did you not see what happened with that? When you share certain things, you leave it open to interpretation that you potentially might agree with the content and every piece of baggage that comes along with it. And the fact that you doubled down by adding your little commentary of saying the truth will set you free, it doesn't matter what your intentions were. And they probably were pure hearted. The intentions probably were like, yo, I want to help my friends. I want to help, you know, protect my people. That's cool. I get that. I totally get that. But from an outside marketing optics perspective, you should have chilled out. Don't ever share anything about other people within your same organization, because what do they say about a house divided? It cannot stand. It will fall. And right now, even though, what do they also say? The path uh, to hell is paved with good intentions. And I'm sure Levi has good intentions. I'm not saying, I don't, I don't know him personally. I'm not going to assume he's a jerk or anything like that. But I'm assuming he's trying to do the right thing. Bro, this ain't it. You should have pulled back in the first place. Because the moment you shared that, every ounce of word, every little insinuation that that article or whoever was quoted in that article said is now tied to you and you are now guilty by association. So when you say, I didn't blame anyone, I didn't do... It doesn't matter. Now it looks like you did. I didn't see a whole thesis tied to that post. Sorry, but that's what it is. Um, let's move on. Let's see, do he have a Shazam production? We for years we have been doing everything we can to fight for you, the fans. Yes, okay. even all of you fans that don't like me. All of you fans uh, who love like Henry you. Cavill, we tried desperately to get Henry Cavill in the first movie. Mm. He wasn't a headless Superman because we wanted him to be a headless Superman. We were thwarted. All of these hardworking people were thwarted. We. Who is that helping? Thwarted. Why are you throwing other people because the only people that can thwart thwart you are people that are related to wb and dc why are you throwing other people under the bus just so that you can save face and act as though well we really wanted superman and we wanted him but they thwarted us you're not helping your case that's the problem here. It doesn't matter who was to blame. It didn't happen. Guess what? That's business. One, you shouldn't have shared that story. Two, you go on even more and throw whoever is responsible. Because now, whenever the news comes out that we find out it was The Rock, it was David Zaslav, it was whoever, whatever news comes out, you are now going to be part of the blame game society because you use thwarted twice and you're trying to cover yourself. You're trying to cover this very, very small program of, of the Shazam family, but at what expense? You're trying to save this little Shazam family at the expense of all of DC, of all of WB? The company that is striving for the last decade to stop being messy and you're adding to that? All right, let's keep going. We're not allowed to have that happen, okay? That was not on us. That was not because we didn't want that to happen for you. Listen, guys, I am a comic nerd. I've been growing up with this stuff. I love all this stuff. I want to blow all of your minds with all the crossovers and all the goods. And trust me, it bummed me out greatly when we couldn't get Henry Cavill. I wanted him so bad in the first movie, and we couldn't get him. That was not because we didn't try. That was not because we chose not to have him there. That was not on us. Moreover, in this movie, people are slagging on James Gunn because Jennifer Holland, his wife, who is an actress who's on a show, who's on Peacemaker and was in Suicide Squad, yes, 
it, but it's ten connected to the Justice Society. We used Jennifer and Steve in that scene, in the mid credit scene in, in Shazam. But that was not the original intent. The original intent was to have Hawkman and Cyclone be there to inviting me. By the way, this is a little bit of a spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen the movie. Sorry. Uh, whatever. It's all online anyway. Um, so our intent, our desire, Walter Hamada, Peter Safran, David Sandberg, myself, everybody, we had an awesome scene. You list names to make it easier to find out who to blame? So it's not Walter Hamada, it's not Peter Safran, it's not... Go it, you go... Bruh, shut up! Shut up! I say that with love. Shut up! Okay? Be quiet. You're not helping the case. Bruh, stop. I know you trying to protect them people, but bro, like... First of all, you gonna say all this to the rock's face? I mean, look, I'm just listen. I, I'm 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 waiting for somebody to say something to the rock's face. I'm ready. I'm waiting for somebody to stop talking at the side of their mouth and just say something to the rock's face. I, I'm just I'm waiting for that conversation. Ooh, I hope somebody asked The Rock one day, like, has anybody actually approached you? Has anyone actually come and talked to you? Because there's a lot of people saying things on the side. But I ain't heard nobody say, well, I talked to The Rock and I told The Rock, blah. That's all I did. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you want to keep hating me? Go on and keep hating me. But for all of you who have been loving me, gosh dang it, I love you so much. I'm so grateful. Um, and listen, Go see the movie. And if you've already seen it, go see it again. In nah. fact, honestly, if, if you, we would really, I could really, <laughs> I, I would really appreciate people going and supporting this movie in lieu of the fact that there are a lot of people that just don't know. They, the, however it all sliced, there's a lot of people, I've been getting DMs, they didn't even know the movie was coming out, which is weird. You know, because if you live in a place like LA or New York, you see billboards all over the place, but maybe they weren't everywhere. I don't know, but, but it's out. Time out. I've heard him say this before online. And he uh he actually said this uh also where basically he was blaming the marketing as one of the biggest issues for the lack of interest or awareness of the Shazam movie. Now, I don't know who's been in his DMs, but I hardly it's hardly there. And, and I, I, I find it so unlikely that millions of people are in your DMs. 30, 40, 100, 200, 400 people, 500 people, 1,000 people are in your DMs right now saying, I didn't know Shazam was out. What they finna do? They go watch the movie. What they gonna add? 1 million to the box office? What's them thousand people going to do? Okay, let's be generous. They add an extra five million to your box office. That still ain't enough. Now, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Shazam 2, Fury of the Gods, have an entire whole Super Bowl commercial? You, you, you know how much Super Bowl commercials cost? That, that's a lot of money in a marketing budget for one of the highest rated programs in the world. And y'all had a whole movie trailer playing during the Super Bowl. You mean everybody just got up and left? Nobody? Like, what? Who didn't know this movie was out? At some point, you're going to have to realize it ain't them. It could be you. Not you personally, Mr. Levi. But it could just be your movie. It could be. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much you believe in it. 
You can believe in it with all your heart, but if it just don't translate, it don't translate. That's art. That happens. You know how many people will put something out there to the world and it just doesn't get received well? It happens. Let's keep going because he's going to say something else that's going to get me mad. And this weekend, I think John Wick comes out. Listen, I love Keanu Reeves. If you want to go see John Wick, fucking knock your, go for it. I mean, I, I'm not going to tell you not to. But John Wick's not a family movie. No. So if you're looking for a movie for your family or uh, your date or whatever, or you just want, don't want to get into like hardcore, you know, pop, 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 um, go see Shazam Fury of the Gods. You will thoroughly enjoy it. It is a throwback to all of the movies that we knew and loved when we were grown up in the 80s and the 90s, guys. It's Amblin. It's Lucasfilm. It feels all like that. Stop you right there, player. Um, Y'all know I got kids. I got a 15-year-old, sophomore in high school. I got a third grader. And I got a little kindergartner. Nothing about Shazam, in my opinion, says that it's a family movie. I'm not judging anybody and how y'all want to raise y'all kids. I know everybody's different, so I respect that. But um, I'm not bringing my third grader and my kindergartner to go watch this movie that is full of swear words, a lot of violence, scary looking creatures you know for a little kid i mean spoiler alert y'all literally have somebody mm, i don't want to say commit suicide but let's just say you literally have someone die you don't see it but you hear it and you see the thing happen y'all remember on the roof i'm supposed to bring my family to go watch that Sir, what is your definition of a family movie? Now, I've told y'all before. I've seen uh, a lot of aspects of the movie where you could say, <laughs> I mean, you know, taste the rainbow, mother effort. Like, eh. Eh. I mean, this movie really... It felt like it came off of a movie on the Disney Channel. Which y'all should have done since y'all wanted to lean towards that silly stuff anyway. Make the movie PG. Take out those swear words. Chill out with the violence. Dumb it down for little kids. Now you're talking. But when you say it's for the family, but it's PG-13, I don't understand what you're talking about because I'm not bringing my kids to go see that. I'll bring my daughter, my oldest daughter, but I'm not, I can't bring my youngest one. And guess what happens when I can't bring my youngest one, my wife has to stay to watch them or vice versa. So now it's not really my whole family. So again, what are you talking about? Let's go on and finish off. Is it a perfect film? No, I don't. No. I, I'm hard pressed to no. think of uh, no, uh, perfect films. No, but you're right. It's not. We are a far better film than some of these critics, reviewers have given us credit for. And those of you who have seen the movie know this. And those of you who haven't seen the movie are in for a treat. Back up. Get into like hardcore, you know, pop, pop, pop. But we are a far better film than some of these critics reviewers have given us credit for and those of you who have seen the movie know this and those of you who haven't seen the movie are in for a treat because it's gonna blow your mind and by the way and to that point and this is the last thing i'm gonna say mm. and then I, I, I literally have to get to that mm -hmm. but this is the last thing i'm gonna say mm -hmm. right now on rotten tomatoes which has become the new cisco and ebert uh of of everything everything comes down to rotten tomatoes mm. um listen i can't go back and convince any of the reviewers or critics or whatever to go change their deal or they're not going to add more. So that is what it is. But man, I would love to, I would love, I would love our audience score 
to mm. get so dang high mm -hmm. that people are like, this doesn't make any sense because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that we got shook down the way that we got shook down. It, oh, it really wow. doesn't. Again, all you haters out there are going to be like, oh, you, your movie sucks. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't. It legitimately doesn't. In fact, if any of you actually saw the movie, which I'm sure that you haven't, you will recognize that it really doesn't suck. It's a really entertaining, really fun movie. So for all of you out there who have seen the movie or when you do see the movie, go mm -hmm. to Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Go go tell them that you enjoyed it. If, if you did. And by the way, if you didn't, you can tell them that too. I'm not going to tell you to lie okay. about it. Okay. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, go to Rotten Tomatoes. Go say... Wow, this was so much fun. Mm. Yada, yada, yada. Give us that thing. Because I want to show... I, I think this is really be a really good opportunity. Okay. Because we're not the first movie this has happened to, by the way. No. Venom. But I think this Morbius. could be a really great opportunity yep. mm -hmm. to show Rotten Tomatoes and to show mm. the industry and to kind of show mm -hmm. the world that this isn't exactly the best way that we should be evaluating movies. This is not exactly the most accurate way that we should be doing this stuff. Because already our audience score is so disproportionately better than what our review score is. So... Obviously, some people got some shit wrong. Um, we gonna stop right there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Levi, for joining us today. I really, really appreciate you, man. Thank you. Maybe one day I'll be able to talk to you. Maybe not. I don't know. But we gonna stop that right there. As a critic, y'all gonna have to indulge me for a little bit. As I um, bring up some things... To address some things that he brought up. First of all, sir, I've already told y'all. It's a lot easier to appeal to the fans than it is to the critics. Why? Once again, you only got one box to checks for a fan. And that's it. Again, it's a very, very low bar um oh nope took that off too fast mm, i got questions i got i got a question mr levi i got a i just got a question look y'all just gonna have to indulge me on this i just i got a quick question because i told y'all i liked the first shazam I am also a Rotten Tomatoes critic, approved critic. I'm sorry, a critic. And I gave the first Shazam a great score, right? And it doesn't sound as though, or it doesn't look as though Mr. Levi cares too much about what the critics think and stuff like that. I get that too. I get that too. My, my, my question though is like, I just need to know, sir, is is this your page? Is this you? Is is this you from 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 20 April 2019? Is is this you? I just need to know if this is you. This, okay, blue check mark. Okay, April 19th. Okay, I think that checks out, right? I just need to know, did you post this? Now, maybe to be fair. Maybe Mr. Levi had to post this because the company told him to. Maybe he posted it because he really believes it. I don't know. I don't know. But apparently he has an issue with us critics that are out there. So I just want to know if that's you, that this you, right? Okay. I actually have this video here so everybody can can listen to it. I just need to know if this you, because this is literally how it starts off. Shazam has electrified America's top critics, and now audiences have made it the number one movie in the country. Oh, is Rewind. Shazam has electrified America's top critics. One more time. Shazam has electrified America's top critics, and now... Just, just for my indulgement, I'm sorry. Shazam has electrified America's top critics. And now That'll be all, sir. That that I'll, I'll, that's that's all I need to see. That's all, sir. Thank you. Let's let's go back to the uh let's go back to the footage. Let's go back to 
something here because I've told y'all about this too. I've told y'all about this. When there's a difference between fans and critics with Rotten Tomatoes, it's a problem, right? What could be the problem here? Oh my gosh, 80% of fans, only a thousand, okay. But 80% of fans love this. Only a little over 50% of critics liked it. Uh Uh-oh. But why wasn't that energy carried last time? Last time, we had 90% with the critics and a lower audience score. Lower. What does that tell you? The movie that made more money, that was more well-received by critics, but you're trading that off for the movie that is not well received by critics but has a higher audience score I'm 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 confusion I am bewilderment I'm bamboozled I'm I'm baffled I I just don't understand why is it that it's all good when critics love your stuff. But when we actually tell you about yourself and your film, now we're the problem? Now Rotten Tomatoes is the problem? Why wasn't Rotten Tomatoes the problem when you were sitting at 90%? Just... I, I mean, is it me? Like, I I haven't been in calculus for a long time, but the math ain't mathing for me right now. I don't understand. Why is it so convenient to throw critics under the bus? Again, the people who take the time out of their day. And by the way, a lot of critics ain't paid. A lot of us do not get, I don't get paid for this. Okay? (laughs) Like, I literally rely on y'all donations. You know, again, I'm not forcing nobody to donate, nothing like that. But I'm saying like, that's my income. No company pays me to go to these movies. Nobody's paying for my parking. No one's paying for my tickets. No one's paying for my planes. No one like that doesn't happen. Now, if it does happen, I'll let y'all know. Right. You know, I have been flown out one or two times, but that's not my regular job. But like, again, we sit here, we take the time out of our day, we go watch your movie, and when you do a great job and you give you give a great product, we give you all the praise. And then what happens? <gasps> all the top critics love it. <gasps> Certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. <gasps> oh my gosh, we set a new record with the highest critic rating ever. Isn't that what the director just said not too long ago? Didn't he say that before he had a high critic rate? But the second that sucker don't go your way, we got to get rid of Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes is a terrible way to judge movies. Ah, let's get rid of the system. You know what? It was fraud. It was stolen. I don't believe anything on Rotten Tomatoes anyway. Don't trust Rotten Tomatoes until it's convenient for us. So I just wanted to know what the double standard is. Because (laughs) I, I... I don't get it. What y'all say? I'm befuddled. I am perplexed. I am dumbfounded. My mind is discombobulated right now. Because I just don't get it. Why is it good one time, but it ain't good another time? Here's the other thing. Let me just tell y'all this too. Those little 400 critics, those little 400 critics. Matter of fact, 
if we were to look at the the first Shazam, I think let's just say it had like five thousand reviews or something like that, right? Let, let me see because I want to be I want to be fair. You got ten thousand plus ratings that gave it an eighty two percent and four hundred and twenty reviews. I guarantee you, I guarantee this four hundred and twenty has a far deeper reach of the amount of people and eyeballs that they can touch than whatever made up this 10,000 plus number. I don't care if this was 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 100,000 people. That audience score is nothing but fluff. The critics, on the other hand, one critic who works for name a TV station, uh, Channel 5 News, can reach millions of people. Keep playing like these critic reviews don't matter. Keep trying to throw us critics under the bus as if we don't serve a purpose in the industry. We're not here to kiss the butts of the studios because the studios don't pay us. I know a lot of y'all that might be misinformed or like conspiracy theories like to believe that, but that's not the case. And if it was the case, sign me up. I got three kids. I don't care. I'll work for you. What you want, sir? You want an eight and a half? You want a nine out of ten? Yes, sir. Pay me. I'll do it. But it's not the way the industry works. My industry, my my opinion is not bought. The critics that the only way that these top critics get bought is they are paid to give their opinion. They're not paid how to give their opinion or what the opinion should be. They're just paid to give their opinion. But at the same time, because it's a symbiotic relationship with the industry, you give us advance notice of these films, you give us early access so we can get a good gauge of the film, we give our opinion, and then we spread it to our masses. That's free advertisement. Didn't you just say the marketing was a problem? You know, for the movie that had a whole Super Bowl commercial? It was the marketing though, right? And then it was the critics, right? So if you had a whole Super Bowl commercial, and I'm sure you had other ads, and the critics, the people with the greatest amount of reach, wasn't really feeling it like that over the board, across the board, at what point, golly, I'm still a state, I'm still in a state of confusion. At what point do you just realize it's not them or this or that. It's me, the movie. Me, the movie that is the problem. You got done saying that all these people that went and saw the movie and had a good time, and I agree with you. There are some people that have watched this movie and liked it. My question for you is this. Why aren't those people getting more people to go watch your movie? If it's so good, why aren't more people getting more people to go watch Shazam 2? I don't hear John Wick having these issues. John Wick is a fantastic movie. Why isn't it having the same problems? It's not even a family movie, which means it's open to a lesser amount of people. I don't like these excuses because I feel like they are inconsistent and not intellectually honest. If you sit here and just tell me our movie didn't do very well, I believe in it. I love it. I love the cast and crew and all that. But for whatever reason, it didn't hit. I'd have 10 times more respect for you and for how you believe and stay consistent with that rather than, well, it was the marketing. Well, it was this. Well, it wasn't. Uh, Saffron and Gun and Hamada and everybody else rock. Like, come on, bro. You're doing too much. So I say this. Oh, by the way, speaking of too much, 
Golly, I almost forgot about this. This, this bro, like, what is this? Somebody asked Zachary Levi on ET, "Have you seen Shaz uh, Black Adam yet?" This is what he said. I have not. Eventually, I mean, I've got a whole full plate of other things I need to get to. Bro, just lie. Just lie. Man, I've seen Shazam. It's amazing. Um, Can't wait to see it again. Who's going to check you on whether you saw it or not? And let's just say you don't want to lie. Because I don't want to, you know, I don't know what his faith is or religion. I ain't going to tell you to go sin or nothing like that. But let's say you don't want to lie. You couldn't just say like, man, I've been trying to go see it. I've been busy. But you know what? I've heard it's really good. And I hope a lot of, I hope I can't, I can't wait till I get to see it. You couldn't say nothing like that. Just something. But, but I'm sorry. Instead, instead, eventually I've got a whole full plate of other things I need to get to. Like what? Like what? This is within your whole Shazam family, whether you like it or not. You couldn't watch this on iTunes. You can watch it on iTunes. It's number one on iTunes. I didn't want to go here, but this is where This is what I think is um, symbolic of a systemic issue within WB, DC. And I, this is the point where I'm actually going to turn the attention to James Gunn and Peter Safran. More so James Gunn, though, because he's the more accessible person. I don't think James Gunn is going to watch this or listen. If he does, this would be great, though. Mr. Gunn, if you're watching... Based off of the actions of your friend, Mr. Zachary Levi, it would be, in my humble opinion, again, respectfully, as a fan of the genre, to incorporate new policies within your DCU. You need to have a marketing policy where you just basically say, again, respectfully, to all those involved, if it ain't something positive about this movie, that movie, and the whole company at all, Shut up. Shut up. Don't go posting nothing on your stories. Don't go tweeting nothing. Don't go ticking and the talking. Don't go tweeting and the tooting. Don't do none of that unless it's in service to helping to elevate the film. Because right now, you need to go get your boy Levi. He's talking too much. He's not saying the right things. Again, you came from Marvel. Many people that have worked in Marvel have talked about how they have had to learn how to deal with the press or they've been trained on how to talk to the press. Don't talk about this for spoilers. Don't do this. I've told y'all this too. Don't listen to nobody that's currently under contract, especially on a Marvel movie, because what? They have to play nice and not do or say anything that will hurt the film. DC needs to have, they need, DC needs to pull in the reins, especially moving forward, to stop this messiness. Again, I don't believe that Zachary Levi is, you know, a, a, a bad guy. I don't believe that he's doing anything, you know, with malicious intent or anything like that. But he does need to be quiet. He does need to go through better PR training. Because none of this helps. All of this indirect conversation about The Rock, it doesn't help. All of this other stuff, I get it. You trying to protect your little crew, your family, that's great. It doesn't help when you attack the whole family. It doesn't help if you protect one corner of the house, but you set the other side on fire. Or you ignore the fire that's going on. Sometimes you have to be part of the solution and just not part of the problem. And a lot of times, shutting up is the best water. 
All right. That's all I got. Um, James Gunn, you got to do better, sir. You got to reel in your talent. I know that's your friend. I know that's cool and all that. But you got to set the standard moving forward with everybody involved, all your actors, all your directors, all the people. All the, Your job right now is to make sure people no longer associate WB and DC with the mess that has happened before you. And right now, that mess is getting an even bigger shadow and it's still looming large. This is no different than the Ray Fisher situation. This is no different than all the other mess and toxicity that was happening for years within the studio. Why are y'all in the headlines? Why are any of your actors anything in the headlines with all this negativity? Because even if that stuff comes out, be quiet. Have y'all heard anybody from Marvel post anything about Victoria Alonso? I haven't heard a peep. I haven't heard one Marvel actor talk about it. I haven't heard anybody sitting here talking about, you know, publicly about the internal business that's going on at Marvel. And they have their share of problems. But they keep that sucker in house. DC, WB, DC Studios, you better get it together. All right. That's all I got for today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats. And if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all. And until next time, I'll see you all later.